I cannot promise you today that I'm going to preach. That's all right. If you, were, if you would have told me this, I, I, they said I was preaching, but they, I thought they were true. If I cannot stand here today and tell you that I'm going to teach. But one thing I can tell you is that I'm going to tell you to keep according to the word of God. If you would stand with me and turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 20, we're going we to make this real fast. We're not going to stay here too long. We're going to get out of the way. Matthew chapter 20, the gospel of Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. When you have it, I ask that you say, I love the Lord. Y'all ain't got it that quick. <laughs> When you have Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16, I will be reading out of the King James Version. When you have it, I ask that you say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Oh, come on, y'all can do better than that. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And he loves me. He loves me. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Yeah, yeah. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Yeah. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Uh -huh. yeah, right. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. Yeah. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Church, keep in mind, the sixth hour was high noon, meaning it was very hot. The ninth hour was three o'clock in the afternoon. It was much cooler. Right now, right now. And about the eleventh hour, they went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand ye here all day idle? Yeah. Yeah. They said unto him, Because no man had hired us. Okay. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatever is right, that shall you receive. See, I don't like when God do me like that because have you ever been in a place where God, where nobody wants to give you anything, but God says, come on, I got you. Yes, See, God get me right up here and twist me and turn me right around like that. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his sword, call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. They likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house. Everybody in the church say murmur. Means they complain. We, 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 we'll get to that point. Saying these last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the heat of the day. Can I paint the picture for you? I know this is off doctor, but have you ever been working on your job? And your boss had you working all day long, and it looks like now you want to bring this joker over here and give him the same thing you gave me, and I've been out here all day long. If you can't relate to that, I don't know what it is. But the Bible said, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not stop agree with me for a penny. Take that thine in and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me, Reverend Burt, to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. For many be called, but few are chosen. Before you take your seat, I want you to grab two people. I want you to look them dead in the eye. And I want you to ask them, are you focused? Are you focused? You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. There we go. I cannot start preaching until I acknowledge my pastor, the Reverend Pastor Burke. Would you please un help me honor my pastor? Yeah. Not a lot of people yeah. that. Young people get up. He can still be pulpit. We respect the man of God to Pastor Fudge, yeah. Mr. Brown, Pastor Fudge. Got words to not express. Were you blessed by the music ministry? Yeah. I, I, I. I'm going to stop crying. <laughs> 
I'm going to just say that lady. That lady right there. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother. Yeah. Thank you, mama, for everything. To, Amen. Amen. to a woman that you might not even know that this is my mama. But when my mama died, she took me like I was out. Mm, the Brown family, Mrs. Donna Rivers. Church, here we have the typical nature of the creature. These men had agreed to work a penny for a day's work, but when they saw that the men which worked less time as they did, they murmured. They complained. Yeah. How many of us have gotten to a point in our lives where we have felt cheated? Yes, cheated by God. Mm -hmm. Our jobs, our marriage, our daily relationships can place us in a place where we feel like God, the creator of the creature, has cheated us. They murmured against the good one of the house. They complained against God. Watch this, church. God says your reward is based on faithfulness, not time. Okay, let me give it to you in our language. It doesn't matter how long you've been a member. How much money you blessed your church with. Church, it may seem like you've been on the battlefield all your life. And God brings someone along to anchor the fight. Remember, his reward is just as great as yours. Okay, what are you saying, preacher? You're looking good with the suit on. You know how mad we get when we've been serving in a position and the father sends his other child, yes, his other child to bridge the gap. God says what we must understand is you have the ability to stop the task. But you don't have the ability to close. My other child has the ability to close, but he can never get what I needed to start this movement. This is what the word implies when it says, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Okay, yeah, can I go a little deeper? Can I go a little deeper? Uh, 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 let's think about a relay race. The individual that begins the race, or should I say the competition, never is the first to cross the ultimate finish line. He or she is just responsible for his or her leg of the race. Yes. Understand this church, every team that is formed has a coach. And every player on the team is placed at their respective positions relative to how effective they can be in regards to the competition that he or she is involved in. Yes. This is also very true in regards to the body of Christ. God is the owner of birth. And Jesus, the, the Savior, is the coach. And he has strategically placed me, you, us, in the position that will benefit this outcome. Race. Call life. Church, can you repeat after me? Stay focused. You must understand the logic of a relay race. On the outside to the public, it may seem like your partner, this young sister or brother in your life or the ministry might be running too fast. But in order for you to properly the path to baton so we can achieve the goal of winning, you must slow up a little. And your teammate must speed up so that he or she can continue with the momentum that you have created. All this must take place while you're attempting to pass the baton. The great thing about our Savior is that everyone receives a blue ribbon. Doesn't matter what God puts his elect, we all have a charge to keep and a God to glorify faithfully. Now you may be saying to yourself, what is the ultimate prize? My brothers and sisters, I stop by to tell you, it's never been a blue ribbon. It's always been eternal life. We must continue to base our hopes on the kingdom. Many times we as a believer get so caught up in life, we don't apply the word of six. We seek be the first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto us according to his purpose. The only way we can achieve this true salvation is through our faithfulness. You see, it takes faithfulness on both ends of the spectrum to achieve this matter. You see, when those men agreed to go into the field and work, it may have been no light at the end of the tunnel. Likewise, the men that entered the vineyard around the pool of the day might have said among themselves, okay, Red Bird, I go out there and work for you. There's so many preachers, deacons, pastors, and teachers where is my reward in this matter? Uh, I remember my grandmother, I call her my mama, y'all know her as Sister Lambert. She used to come across this head. I used to go to church with her all the time. And she said, she say, I said, Mama, why do you go to church so much? What are you going to do with me? She said, baby, it takes faith to follow God. It takes faith to please God. 
What are you saying, preacher? Okay, I'll make a little plan for you. The same faith they took for Reverend Henderson and his faithful members 76 years ago to start this very church. It's the same faith, or in some cases, more faith for my pastor, Reverend Burke, to come into a well established church 26 years ago and see his reward in his mouth. Because Reverend Burke may have looked at Old Grove as an already established built church and there's really nothing for me to do or achieve in this mouth. The members that were here or might have been working in the ministry might murmur among themselves. What do we make here? Yeah. Ain't no room for him, because I'm in my state of comfort. Yeah. Try to find somebody next to you and ask them, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? And if so, that's your problem. <laughs> Church, we must stay focused on our leg of the race, because we all make up the body of Christ and we all have a ton to pass on faithfully. So ask yourselves as believers, am I passing the baton of religion? Or am I passing the baton of faithfulness that is deeply rooted in spirituality? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's go a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? Can I go a little deeper? That is religion of practice was to come to church. Give all his money, but he didn't have love. Mama's religion was to make everybody in the house go to Sunday school, but she had no compassion for the sister that comes to church during the holiday. Now, come on now, uh, you know those times, Christmas, Easter, church picnic, they always seem to come around in the world, they really being free. So what happens is, mama and daddy dies and they leave a religion, now the only outside is great, because their children are faithful and coming and giving to the church building. But the baton that mama and daddy passes is full of malice and condemnation. So instead of the church, which is the body of Christ, growing and developing properly, we have created a dysfunctional and in some cases that baton to pass on. This is why our church is not growing, because we are passing the baton for the religion instead of spirituality, which is the very nature of Christ. Church, what we must understand is that this religion, which is defined as a practice or tradition, can only take us so far. Amen. Spirituality is something that has no boundaries. Actually, religion is not a bad thing, but religion is only designed to help us curb our habits. So when the Father pours out His Spirit, we as His creation can grab onto it and begin our journey from character to character. Glory to glory. You must understand that your habits will reach the destiny in your life. And it's religion which we understand to be a practice becomes dormant and sale. This is why many of us be tired of coming to church. Because we're filled with mom and daddy's religion instead of filling our hearts daily with his spirit. I'll prove it to you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 17, tell us now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So if I as the believer say in the spiritual realm, the destiny of my life, it doesn't exist. But that's another sermon. I only got 30 minutes. Yeah. As I began to study and prepare for this sermon, naturally, I wanted to go into another direction. Yeah. But the Spirit reminded me that for six days, Eric, I created the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, Brother Aunt Troy, I rested. But I knew that I needed someone to pass up a ton of love to my creation. I looked all around humanity and I couldn't find anyone that was willing and able to run this leg of the race. God recognizing Jesus, Jesus recognizing his destiny, it's the ultimate and redeemed man, but in the process he had a responsibility to pass up a ton of love to mankind. Church, we must understand that giving our life to be in this race isn't enough. We as believers don't have love, all that we do is vanity. That means it don't mean much. We must stay focused. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, this same Jesus had a duty, but he left us instructions. Wow. Right there in the text. Yeah. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Mankind in the form of you, me, us, must understand that we have a duty and a responsibility to run our end of the race. And our destiny cannot truly be fulfilled until we pass up a ton of love. We will pass up a ton. We will affect the next generation. Church is our purpose. We say we want to be like him, but we must pass a baton full of faith, love, and patience because the next generation is depending on us, church, faithfully. Being on this team requires faith. Running in this race, 
Pastor Fudge requires love. Passing the baton, you can't get it without Jesus. Church, it is impossible to run this race without faith in him who is able to keep us from fault. I stop by to tell you that old grown missionary Baptist church ain't dead. We just shifted until I knew that of the race. People of God, your circumstances might look dead, but God says you're shifting into your new leg of the race. Your relationship at home or the situation in your job might not look promising, but God says stay focused. You're shifting into your new leg of the race. When he went to the cross, this same Jesus was focused. When he was bruised for our iniquities, he was focused. When he walked on the water, he was focused. When he looked at mankind, saw me and you and the burden that we was carrying, he was focused. When he fed 5,000, he was focused. When he was letting the witness to be tempted by Satan, he was focused. When the father asked him to put down his preacher for the preacher, he was focused. When they came and saw the stones had been rolled away and he had ascended to the father, he was focused. When he gave up the ghost and took the sting out of death, he was when he came back to meet his disciples to show them the holes in his wrist and the puncture in his side, my God, he was focused. When he see, when we see him sitting on the right hand of the Father, church, he was focused. That's right, that's right. My brothers and sisters, when all that you never had to six is going on all around you. Stay focused. I said, my brothers and sisters, when all AG double hockey six is going on all around you, stay focused. When it doesn't look promising for you on your job or your marriage or relationship, stay focused. When it feels like you want to give up and just throw in that old dirty towel, stay focused. When your friends and family turn no back on you because they don't approve, but you just got paid, stay focused, son. Stay focused. When it looks like your children have left you, uh, about everything that you gave them by the wayside, stay focused. When you just made the transition to the body of Christ, and it seems like it would be easier to turn your back, by the grace of God, you must stay focused. When it seems like your bishop, pastor, elder, brother, or sister in Christ, just don't understand your circumstance and the fact that you are so in love with this man or this woman, stay focused. Why was why, 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 why was why must we his creation stay focused? Because the very essence of what we as a believer follow was and is oh. People of God, the father of the vineyard has a question before we agree to come into his vineyard. My time is up. My pastor is looking at me. I want to say, oh, Are we focused on our leg of the race? I said, are we focused on our leg of the race? Or are we focused on our position with the team? God bless you.